side order is pretty fun. Let's talk about the chips. I'm not doing this exactly by chip category. I put them in a grouping that made more sense to me. First are all the chips that increase your damage, and not all of these are even part of the red damage category. Before that, let's go over all the different damage types. There are six different categories that they can fall into. This is important because the category of an attack's damage determines which chips will improve it. These categories are main damage, subspecial damage, explosion damage, rush damage, sound damage, and poison ink damage. An attack can only belong to a single damage category. However, a weapon, sub, or special can have different attacks, meaning it can cross categories. For example, the roller can deal main damage with his flicks, or rush damage by rolling over enemies. Also, even though it isn't a chip, the damage up hack you can get from Marina affects all damage types. This is the only thing in side order that affects all damage types, not a single chip does this. This chip improves both your main damage as well as your sub special damage. You'll notice that I grouped sub and special in the same category. This is because this is the only chip that specifically improves that damage type, so in terms of stat scaling, they're treated the same. Before I get into the scaling of the chip, let's go over what counts as main damage type and what counts as sub special damage types. Some of these might not be as obvious as you think. Main damage includes shooting with the dualies, shooting with the brella, shooting with the splatter shot, flicking with the roller, shooting with the charger, direct hits with the stringer, but not the exploding arrows, horizontal and vertical ink slashes with the stamper, but not the direct hits with the sword, attacking with the slosher, direct hits with the luna blaster, but not the splash damage, attacking with the octobrush, and shooting the splatling. Also, for purposes of this video, assume anything I say about the splatter shot is also true for the octo shot. I couldn't find any differences between the weapon's main parameters. The main damage type was pretty straightforward, but the sub and special category is a little different. For sub weapons in this category, we have the sprinkler. And that's it. I'm not kidding, there's no other sub weapon that does this type of damage. For special weapons, we have damage from the ink storm, a direct hit with the trizuka but not the splash, shooting an enemy with the crab's rapid fire, hitting a direct hit with the crab's ink lob but not the splash, and that's it. Actually, there's a couple more. The drone sprinkler, which you can get from a chip, and the ink that comes out of the turbine tower when you shoot it. Whenever I bring up damage from the environment like this, it means the damage can be affected by chips, just like your own attacks. So the turbine sprinkler will do more damage if you equip this chip. It's important to know that this really is it. There are no other attacks that do sub or special type damage. So if you're trying to increase damage from something like the splat bomb or the ultra stamp, taking this chip won't do anything for you. Anyway, for scaling, you can get up to 9 of these chips during a run. This is one of the hardest chips to see any decent return on, generally only increasing damage by 5% per chip. However, the fifth and the last chip substantially increase damage, with it doubling your damage if you have all nine. Again, it would only double your damage for the relevant types. I'm grouping these two together because they're basically the same thing, with the only difference being at what range they kick in. These only affect main damage. This means things like Sprinkler or Inkstorm won't get any benefit. Also, these only do the extra damage if you're close or far away from an enemy, depending on the chip. There is a middle ground distance, however, where you can still get part of the damage buff. The upsides of the damage buffs you get from this are much higher for each chip. There are only 5 levels, but you can double your main damage if you get all of them. Also, this damage is multiplied if you have any of the previous chip. So if you have 9 ink damage chips and 5 main damage chips, you'll be doing 4 times the damage with your main weapon, assuming you're at the correct distance. This increases damage for all explosion type attacks. For your main weapons, this only includes the exploding arrows from your stringer, but not the direct hits, and the splash damage from your luna blaster, but not the direct hits. For sub weapons, this includes splat bombs, splat bombs from the pearl drum, suction bombs, the splash damage from burst bombs, but not the direct hits, the splash damage from the burst bomb from the pearl drum, but not the direct hits, the explosion from the curling bomb, ink mines, ink mines from the pearl drum, and fizzy bombs. For your specials, it includes the explosion from the reef slider, the splash damage from the trizuka, but not the direct hits, triple ink strike, the ink strike from the pearl drone, splash damage from the crab tank's ink lob, but not the direct hits, splash damage from throwing your ultra stamp, but not the direct hit, the booyah bomb, triple splash down, and lucky bombs that you can get from a different chip. Additionally, there are also some environmental explosions that count for this damage type. This includes destroying a portal, shooting a blowfish, jumping from a spring enemy's leftover spring after you splat them, explosions from the remaining pieces of the tower enemy after you destroy the head, the explosion from the anglerfish enemy if you destroy all the eggs on his head, and the explosion from those gushing enemies after you shoot down their ball. You might notice that explosions are much more representative of sub and special categories than the sub and special category damage type itself. Plus, this is much more effective at raising the damage. You can get up to 9 of these, but even a single chip makes a noticeable difference. 
with much larger increases coming in at the fifth and the last chip again, which goes up to five times the damage if you get all nine. This is more than you would get with combining the ink damage chips with the main damage chips. The biggest downside is that this won't help your main weapon unless you're using the blaster or the tri-stringer. Also note that shooting an enemy directly with the blaster will still cause the enemies around it to take splash damage, whereas hitting an enemy directly with a stringer will do no splash damage and only do the main damage. You need the arrows to pop on a surface for the attacks to count as an explosion, unless you shoot a portal. For some reason, this deals both main and splash damage at the same time, making the stringer one of the better weapons to destroy a portal. Also, I had said that direct hits from a burst bomb don't count as explosion damage, which is true, but it'll still explode after hitting an enemy, dealing explosion damage to those around it, just like the blaster. Also, the burst bomb deals the explosion damage to the enemy it landed on as well, unlike the blaster. This means that the enemy hit will take damage from the direct hit of the burst bomb, which is a different damage type, as well as the damage from the explosion. This isn't damage related, but I thought it made sense to include it here. This impacts all the same explosion attacks as before, but instead of increasing damage, it increases the blast radius. This includes both the damage area as well as how much ink it produces. You can get 5 chips total and it will double the blast radius if you get all of them. In case you're wondering, this does not increase the radius of the Tostic Mist sub. That one doesn't count as any category since it does no damage and creates no ink. This scales the exact same way as the splash damage chip, so getting all 9 will increase your rush damage by 5 times. The game says rush damage is movement based damage, but there are probably more than you would think. These include damage from the umbrella shield, whether you launch it or you walk into an enemy with it out, rolling over an enemy with a roller, running into an enemy with a brush, and physically hitting an enemy with horizontal or vertical slashes from the splatana. We also have a fair bit of sub and special weapons affected by this. Sliding a curling bomb through an enemy, a direct hit with a burst bomb, but not the explosion, a direct hit from a burst bomb thrown by the pearl drone, but not the explosion. Damage from the splash wall, for some reason. Sliding through an enemy with a reef slider. Both of the Kraken attacks, including jumping and charging. Rolling into an enemy as a crap tank ball. Charging with the ultra stamp. And hitting an enemy directly with a thrown ultra stamp, but not the explosion that comes from that. Hitting an enemy with the 8 ball, or the launch corpse of the top enemy, also counts as a rush attack. There's also some extra rush attacks that you can get from chips. This gives you squid surge and squid roll a large hitbox. This is a dually only chip and gives your dodge roll a hitbox. This is a Splatana only chip and gives your forward charge slash a hitbox. Again, all three of these count as rush attacks and scale with the rush damage chip. This is one of the easiest damage types to increase. It has the same max as the splash and rush chips, but you only need to get 5 of them to get the 5 times multiplier instead of 9. It's also one of the rarest damage types, which explains why they made it so easy to increase. There are no main or sub weapons that do sound damage. We only have the Wave Breaker, the Killer Whale, and the Killer Whale used by the Pearl Drone. Also, the Shockwave released by the Termite Tower after clearing a checkpoint, as well as the Shockwave released by the Pearl Drone's Step Off Song counts as sound damage as well. Sound damage also has the advantage of being armor piercing. It will do full damage to things like the top enemy, or the giant ball boss. This is the last damage type in the game, and it only affects the damage taken from enemies sitting in your ink. Even without the chip, your ink will do at least some passive damage to enemies. However, there are some weird quirks to keep in mind. First, and obviously, you can only use this against enemies that are capable of getting stuck in your ink, so it won't work against flying enemies. It also won't work on the tiny swarming enemies, since they always produce ink directly underneath them. Against the tower sniper enemies, your ink does noticeably reduce the damage. Even equipping more of this chip looks like it doesn't scale against that enemy specifically. On the plus side, portals sitting in your ink take 1.5 times the passive damage, which also scales with this chip. However, while most enemies stuck in your ink will die on their own if left alone, portals will stop taking damage once they're almost dead, meaning you'll need to finish them off yourself. This is also true for the really fast fish enemies that run away from you. They can take damage from your ink, but they won't die from it. For scaling, this chip gets massive damage buffs for each of its 5 levels, especially for the first and last, going up to 8 times the damage with all of them equipped. This chip will make it so that you do more damage to enemies slowed down by either your ink or the Toxic Mist sub. This means it's possible to apply to enemies that would normally not be affected by poison ink, as long as you have the Toxic Mist sub. This chip also affects almost all the damage types. The only exception is that it won't make your poison ink do any more damage. All of the damage types are affected by this, unless you use it against the portal. For some reason, they don't take extra damage from this effect. If you get up to 5 of them, you can do 2 times the damage to enemies being slowed down. There are three chips related to doing knockback. They relate to damage types, so it's best to cover them now. This chip will allow your main weapon attacks to deal knockback. 
Keep in mind that it needs to be a main type of damage, so something like rolling over an enemy or using a sprinkler wouldn't count. Normally, this damage type doesn't knock enemies back at all, but getting one will increase it to 100%, which means nothing to me since I don't have a point of reference, but it's better than zero. Knockback has the added benefit of interrupting many enemy attacks. Get it high enough and you can just launch enemies off the map. The chip scales better with each additional chip. Getting five of them will make you do 20 times the knockback than only having one. Most basic enemies are affected by knockback, even the large, slow-moving fish and the tower enemies. These chips scale the exact same way, they just affect explosion or rush damage respectively. The nice thing about these attack types is that they already do knockback, but you can use these chips to increase it by up to three times. These chips will allow you to fire your weapon faster. They were also a pain in the ass to research. While there aren't that many chips that affect firing rate, the scaling for them is different depending on what your main weapon is, meaning I had to get all of these to max level for each relevant weapon. This affects almost all of the main weapons. It'll increase the rate of fire, making your weapon deal substantially more damage. Downside is that you'll also increase your ink consumption at the same rate, so you'll want to pair this with ink recovery or ink saving chips. I'll go through the scaling starting with the weapon least affected by it. Even for the lowest scaling weapon, I'd still say it's generally useful to go for this unless your build involves not using your main weapon a lot. Lowest scaling starts with Umbrella, where 5 chips will allow you to shoot 2 times faster. The Slosher can go up to 2.27 times faster. Brush goes up to 2.5 times faster. 2.66 times for the Splatter Shot. 3.28 times for the Roller. 3.5 times for the Dually. Also keep in mind that your fire rate is faster when you're in turret form after doing a dodge roll and having 5 chips on the blaster turns you into an unstoppable killing machine at 10 times the fire rate. I'm not really sure why this is a separate chip. Instead of main fire speed, the stamper can get this chip which basically does the exact same thing. This will increase how fast you can do your basic attack by up to 2.6 times, though this doesn't affect how fast you can charge a vertical slash. This only affects the 4 weapons that can be charged. Wipe main fire speed is generally very useful as long as you have the ink for it. The smallest rate increases for the Splatana, which will allow you to charge a vertical slash in as little as 37% of the time. Splatling is very slightly better, as it can take as little as 35% of the time. And then the stringer goes down to as little as 33% of the time. The charger can get full charge in 5% of the original time, which as far as I can tell is a lie, since the frames between zero charge and full charge is zero. Just pull the trigger for a fully charged shot, no matter what, assuming you have the ink for it. The charger version of this chip also gets a hidden benefit of letting you charge mid-air at the same speed as on the ground. For some reason, getting the second level of this chip will remove the charge speed penalty for charging in mid-air. This isn't true for the stringer or the splatling, which also have a slower charge in mid-air. This isn't exactly a fire rate chip, but I'm putting it here since it's sorta of related. This is a splatling exclusive chip that makes your charge last longer. While the rate of fire isn't any faster, it does mean that you'll get more bullets for a single full charge. As an added benefit, it doesn't even cost more ink. If you get 5 of this chip, your splatling barrage will last twice as long as normal. This is to cover the other support style chips not already covered. They're pretty straightforward, so this will be quick. This increases how fast you recover ink when standing or swimming. It goes up to 3 times faster. These reduce how much ink is used by either your main weapon or sub weapon. They scale exactly the same, reducing the ink cost to as little as 25%. I generally say you don't need more than a couple of the ink saver main chips, unless you're also heavily investing at a fire rate. The sub chips can be more useful on their own, as having 5 of them can let you easily spam your sub weapon. This restores a percentage of your ink tank for each enemy you splat. At 5 chips, you restore 20% of your total ink tank for each enemy defeated. This increases the slowing effect for enemies stuck in your own ink. Normally, your ink would cause enemies to move at 70% their normal speed. A single chip will drastically reduce this to 45%. Get all 5 and it goes down to 1%, which basically means they can't move until the ink below themselves. This is the only chip I would say is basically never worth getting. Enemies are plentiful and generally easy to hit even with the most inaccurate weapons. Increasing the accuracy can be a little useful for hitting smaller flying enemies, but not by much. If you get all 5 chips, your shot lose all their deviation and shoot completely straight. This chip has potential to be much more useful than the last one. It makes your shots automatically target enemies that you're looking at. The higher percentage just increases how closely you have to be facing the enemy before it locks on. This also reduces any shot spread as the bullets go straight towards the enemy. At the highest level, it can lock onto basically anything in front of you. 
It won't lock onto anything that's out of range, however, so it's useful to pair this with range increasing chips, which I'll cover soon. I find the chip most useful when I have a high rate of fire and a decent range. It'll switch targets instantly after splatting them, which makes it easier to clear large groups of enemies faster. On the downside, sometimes it will go for targets that you don't want it to, like boxes or ink rails, or it'll try to target things behind cover. This is a Brella exclusive chip that only has one level. It will allow you to shield yourself while shooting with your Brella, and never launch it, making it behave like an undercover Brella. You'll completely lose the ability to launch it, so keep that in mind before picking this. This reduces how long it takes for the Brella to regenerate after you launch it or after it gets destroyed. It will normally take 5 seconds, but with this chip, it can go down to half a second. If it's paired with no launch Brella, then it only affects the respawn after it's destroyed, since you can't ever send it out. This is a splatling only chip that allows you to start charging midway through firing. Like the ballpoint or Nautilus, it's useful for when changing targets since it can stop you from wasting shots while you aim. This affects how far your main firing goes. There's only one chip that does this, but it affects every weapon and scales differently for each. The lowest scaling is for the splatling, which increases the range by up to 1.5 times. The stringer can get increased by 1.8 times, and the charger can be increased by 2 times. These are also the longest range weapons by default, so they don't need as much scaling in order to shoot very far. The blaster scales up to 2.1 times, 2.3 times for the splatter shot, 2.4 times for the splatana. The dually, roller, and slosher all go up to 2.5 times, but they have slightly different scalings on the lower amounts, 2.8 times for the brella, and 3 times for the brush. These chips affect how much turf is inked. Only two chips this time, but they also scale differently depending on the weapon. This impacts the ink from your main weapon fire. Note that this won't impact things like running with your roller or brush, or the explosions from your stringer's arrows. The bow goes up to 2 times more ink coverage, roller goes up to 2.4 times, and 2.6 times for the brella, but not the launched shield. 2.65 times for the splatana, 2.7 times for the splatter shot, 2.8 times for the dually. The slosher and the charger scale basically exactly the same, with a small difference between them at the fourth chip level. At max, they both ink 3.1 times better. 3.2 times for the brush, and 3.3 times for the splatling. Notably, the blaster doesn't get this chip at all, unless I was very unlucky and never ran into it, especially considering the blaster has chip bias for this type. I can understand why they would have removed it, since it would have screwed you over since explosion radius is a much better way to increase your ink with the blaster. This affects how wide the ink trail is when moving with the roller or brush, as well as how wide it is when launching your brella or holding it up as a shield. For the roller and brush, the scaling is exactly the same, increasing the ink turf by up to 1.5 times. For the brella, this can go up to 2 times. Just covering the last chips from this section that didn't fit in before. Increases how much the charge gauge is filled by inking the ground. At a full 5 chips, it will charge your gauge 3 times faster. This will make the hitbox of your attacks much larger. This doesn't affect how much it inks, it just makes it easier to hit enemies. Normally I'd say this chip isn't very good, but it can be helpful when paired with the next chip. This makes it so that your main shots go through enemies. It will have and damage for each enemy it goes through, but it still makes clearing large crowds much easier. Pairing it with ink attack size makes it easier to clear large clumps of enemies. At full scaling, it can go through up to 8 enemies, which I think is overkill. You get a large enough benefit by only equipping a single chip, and I feel going over 2 or 3 chips is definitely not worth it. Also, this chip is not available for the charger, since a fully charged shot from that pierces all enemies at full damage by default. Most other blue chips which I didn't already cover are in this section. These focus on movement speed and movement based buffs. These do exactly what they sound like. They also scale at the exact same rate, making you move up to 1.66 times faster. Note that the swim speed chip doesn't affect your speed when using the Kraken. This chip is only for the brush and the roller. It affects how fast you move while inking the ground. Regardless if you use it with the brush or the roller, the scaling is the same and goes up to 2 times faster. A dually exclusive chip. Normally you would only get one dodge roll, but it can increase up to 6 if you fully equip this chip. This is pretty good when paired with dodge roll attack and rush attack chips, but 6 is probably more than most people would need. This allows you to hold a fully charged stringer, charger, or splatling while swimming. More chips allow you to hold it for longer. It allows you to go up to 7.5 seconds, but again, this is probably longer than most people would want. I find the charge hold most useful for slight repositionings, and I don't need it for that long. Plus, your ink won't refill while you're holding a charge, so you won't always want to be using it. This allows you to charge your special meter by moving. 
This needs to be horizontal movement, as falling straight down doesn't help. The higher it is, the more points of special will charge, going up to 5 points of special charge per... something. I don't actually know how far a unit of movement is, but I guess it's around 1 or 2 steps. The faster you move, the faster this will charge. I also don't know how many points are needed in order to get a special. I would guess around 200, based on the multiplayer weapons, but I couldn't find anything in the game that told me the points for the side order weapons. This recovers a percentage of your ink while moving. Again, it's for horizontal movement only, and again, the faster you go, the better. It goes up to 8% recover per whatever, which basically means you'll never run out of ink as long as you're moving at least a little. These chips deal with item drops and the lucky chain. The lucky chain is what builds when you defeat enemies. The higher the chain is, the better chance of getting drops. By default, this chain can go as high as 10. Each number in the chain increases your drop rate by 10%, meaning that a full chain of 10 would double your drop rate. Normally, the armor containers only have a half a percent chance to drop, but with this, it can increase by up to 3%. Remember that this and the other items that I'll discuss can have their drop rate affected by the lucky chain as well. So if you have 5 of these chips and you have a lucky chain of 10, your drop rate will actually be 6%. Both of these items have a 1% chance to drop normally, and can increase up to 20% with all the chips, not accounting for the lucky chain. The ink bottle restores half your ink tank, while the special cans restore half your special gauge. In high amounts, I find the special can more useful, especially since using your special will fully restore your ink anyway. This has the same scaling as the ink bottle or can special drop, but this item normally doesn't drop from enemies at all, which you wouldn't want anyway unless you also have some drone abilities equipped. Each one you pick up will charge all your drone gauges by 100 points, which I'll get to later. These discs will trigger the step off song from Pearl if you collect three of them. It's normally a 1% drop chance, but can go up to 6%. These are explosives that are left behind by enemies. Normally they don't drop at all, but a single chip can make them drop at a rate of 15%. At 5 chips, enemies will drop them at a 90% rate, which means it's basically 100% guaranteed if you have any amount of lucky chain. For the purposes of damage and AoE scaling, keep in mind that these bombs count as explosions. This increases how high you can bring the lucky chain, with the highest max chain being 99 if you have 5 chips. Again, it's a 10% increase to your drop rates per chain level, meaning drops will be 9.9 .9 times more likely at a chain of 99, at which point everything will just keep dropping all the time. Normally you get 3 seconds to continue your lucky chain before it resets to 0. This chip can increase that window to as high as 20 seconds, making it much easier to keep a high lucky chain. This allows you to build lucky chain by inking the ground. The more chips you have, the less turf you need to ink in order to increase your chain by 1. This is good for keeping the chain while no enemies are near you, or for building it up easily. At full chips, you only need to ink 5 points worth of ground in order to get a chain increase. For reference, this. Is about 25 to 30 points worth of ink. Meaning it should increase your lucky chain by about 5 or 6 if you have the max number of chips. This is the last section, and it's pretty straightforward. All of these chips have to do with your pearl drone. This allows Pearl to throw her own splat bombs at enemies. As will be true for all of her abilities, the more chips you have, the more often she will be able to use it. For this, it can take as few as 70 points with max chips. Normally, your drone gauges charge on their own. By default, they charge at a rate of 6 points per second. This means that for this ability, it would take 11.5 seconds for a drone to use a splat bomb if you have all 5 chips. This allows Pearl to drop an ink mine. This can be as fast as every 70 points, so it would happen every 11 and a half seconds, just like the splat bomb. This allows Pearl to launch a burst bomb in as little as every 60 points, so every 10 seconds at the default charge speed. This allows Pearl to shoot ink droplets from the top of her head. She shoots only one ink droplet per use, but it can charge in as little as 2 points, meaning she would use it 3 times a second at the default charge speed. Annoyingly, Pearl doesn't launch attacks unless there are enemies nearby, which is normally a good thing, but it also applies to this ability, which means she won't be inking the ground while there's no enemies nearby. This allows her to use a Killer Whale ability. Unlike the version from your special, it's only a single beam rather than the 5.1 version, but it does last pretty long. At 5 chips, it'll take 280 points, or 46 and a half seconds to charge. Pearl can launch her own ink strike with this chip, but will only launch one rather than three. It starts slower than the killer whale, but eventually charges significantly faster, at 180 points, letting her use it every 30 seconds. This lets Pearl drop items for you. She can drop any item except for the Pearl battery. 
At 5 chips, the cost is reduced to 200 points, allowing you to spawn an item every 33 seconds. Like I said earlier, you typically build drone gauge at a rate of 6 points per second. This chip can increase that to up to 12 points, doubling your charge rate. This is especially nice since it applies to all your drone abilities at once. This is the fastest way to charge the more costly drone abilities. It allows you to build drone gauge by defeating enemies. At max level, you'll get 70 points for each enemy splatted. This charges the drone gauge based on how far you move. Like with other similar movement abilities, it has to be horizontal movement, and the faster the better. At max level, this charges 5 points of drone gauge per whatever a unit of movement is. This allows you to build drone gauge by inking the ground. This will include ink from the environment or ink that the Pearl drone produces herself, like with his sprinkler. At max level, you get 3 points of drone gauge for every point of ground you inked. Again, for reference, this is about 25 to 30 points of ground, meaning it would charge your drone gauge by about 75 to 90 points if paired with the max number of this chip. Okay, hope that was useful, hope that was enjoyable. Thanks, bye.